Well, everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics, and today we are going to be doing part five of our beginner series to starting an aquarium. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about where you can purchase your fish. If you haven't seen the other parts yet, I highly recommend go back and watch parts one through four. It gives you some background information as to how to plan for an aquarium, how to set aquariums up. And so I would take a look at those if you haven't set up your aquarium yet. But today, we want to talk about where to buy fish, so stay tuned. All right, so let's talk about our options. Option number one, you can go to some of the chain pet stores like a Petco or a PetSmart and buy fish there. So I wanna talk about some advantages and disadvantages from doing that, at least from our perspective and the, and the experience that we've had purchasing fish at these different places. So the large pet stores, we tend to have fairly mixed luck uh, doing that in terms of the health of the fish. One of the things that we do, and I highly encourage you to do the same, is keep track of how your fish are doing. And so as you purchase fish from a pet store, track how well they did. Did they die early? How long did they live? If they did die, can you determine the cause of death? And make notes of that. We actually have an Excel spreadsheet that we use, and I've been tracking that for as long as we've been keeping fish. And so I can go back and look at my notes to determine, is this a good place to buy fish? And if it's not, why? what's happening to the fish. So when we look at these large chain stores, this is where our fish survival rates are the lowest. And the way I define that is if something dies within the first two to three weeks, I consider that to be an unhealthy fish. We do a pretty good job of making sure our fish live a long time. And so if I see something unusual there and the, the rates of fish death are kind of high, that it raises a red flag for me. And so for the large chain stores, our survival rates are as low as 70 to 65 to 70 percent. That is incredibly unusual for us. Why? In almost every case, when we bring those fish home, they wind up with ick. And if you haven't already watched it, I have a quarantine video out. I highly recommend you watch it. I'll put a card up here at the top. It's going to appear. Watch that quarantine video. When we buy from large pet stores or when we bought from large pet stores, we always, always, always quarantined our fish. And because we knew the vast majority of the time that they were going to be sick, we would put meds in the water just to either prevent further sickness or to make sure that we kept those fish as healthy as possible. That worked to an extent, but still our survival rates weren't the best. And that's not to say that that's going to be the case at all chain stores, at all large pet stores across the, across the United States or wherever you're from. It just means that from the stores around our local area, survival rates for the fish that we have purchased have been relatively low. So we tend not to buy fish there. Now, the advantage is often the fish are going to be relatively inexpensive and it's super convenient. And so it's really tempting sometimes to go there and be like, oh wow, they've got neon tetras on sale for a dollar or there's guppies, you know, two for two dollars or a dollar a piece or whatever. You just have to consider the health of those fish, really watch them closely in the tanks, make sure they don't have any spots, they're not flashing, they're not swimming in, in odd ways because if you're dealing with a pet store that keeps, a cent that keeps all the tanks on a central system, if one tank has got a disease, there's a chance that the rest of the tanks could be affected by that as well. So that could be something to consider uh, when looking at the larger pet stores. The other thing that you have to consider as well when you're purchasing fish from those uh, pet stores is the level of knowledge that the employees have. And so you'll have to make that determination on your own. Some have been really, really good. Some really are struggling to understand the basics of freshwater fish keeping. Okay, the next option you have is looking at your local pet stores, the smaller ones, the mom and pop shops, the local fish stores, and that's generally all they do. We have had pretty decent luck with the few local fish stores that are op still open in our area. The sad thing is, is they're going away. As a lot of you have experienced, there aren't as many of them now as there were at least when I was a child. And that's kind of sad because some of the advantage you get when you're going to a local smaller uh, fish store is you get sometimes better service, at least in our area, that tends to be the case, better service, much more knowledgeable staff, and the fish are generally healthier. I am not saying that we've never had a problem purchasing fish from one of the smaller local pet stores, but the health of the fish is definitely greater than the large chain pet stores that we've experienced. So it's definitely an option. You're, you're probably going to get increased service if that pet store is doing what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, even prices will sometimes be relatively competitive and sometimes they will bring in fish that are a little less common than the large chain stores where they're trying to move 
larger quantities of fish and therefore they're they're choosing fish that most people would buy sometimes if you have a smaller local pet store they can purchase fish and take a little bit of a chance and and get fish into the store that are a little bit less common which can be an advantage to you if you're looking for something different next option is looking online the advantage there is you can hopefully find exactly what you want and sometimes that's not possible at the local fish stores the prices are going to vary, the availability is going to vary, the quality of the fish is going to vary, and so the perhaps the disadvantages you don't necessarily know exactly what you're getting in terms of quality, in terms of health. The fish have to be shipped, and when fish are shipped, there's going to be some stress involved there. And so your survival rates may vary depending on what types of fish you're trying to purchase, how long they've been in transit, but it is definitely an option, and it's an option that a lot of people use with some, some degree of success. The last thing I want to talk about in my personal favorite way to acquire fish is through local fish clubs. Uh, we have two very good ones in this area, and that is the Greater Chicago Cichlid Association and uh, the Greenwater Aquarist Society. And you've heard me talk about those clubs before. Uh, you've seen some of the fish that we've gotten. Of all the different options that we have, my fish survival rates are by far the highest when we purchase fish through our local clubs. Uh, we very, very rarely ever lose fish. I have never brought a fish home that's been visibly sick. We've never had an ick outbreak in a quarantine tank because of sick fish. And we've had just the best luck you could possibly imagine going through our local clubs. And there's different mechanisms there when it comes to local clubs. For instance, the two that I mentioned, they'll have swap meets. Uh, a couple times a year, at least the Greater Chicago Cichlid Association, Greenwater Society, they both have swap meets. Uh, Greater Chicago Cichlid Association has more of them, but the option is there where local breeders are coming to these clubs and they're selling fish. And again, usually at least from our perspective and the experience that we've had have been excellent quality fish. Uh, some of these clubs hold auctions a few times a year and it's a great opportunity to sit around for half a day and bid on fish and you can find really good deals there both at the swaps and the auctions and then they have their local monthly meetings and the nice thing about that is people bring in fish that they've they've bred and they're doing their breeder award, awards uh, programs and so again it's a really great way to pick up some fish that are maybe a lot more expensive at a pet store but you're getting them much cheaper typically through your local clubs now the one thing that may be, may be a turnoff to certain people is a lot of the fish you buy through your local clubs are going to be smaller. They might be juveniles. They might be just out of that fry stage. If they're cichlids, they may not be showing color yet. But as most of you know, at least from, uh, from our perspective, we don't mind allowing fish to grow up. In fact, that's something that we enjoy is watching them from fry or very small juveniles with very little color in many cases and watching them grow and watching them go through the progression of their lives and start to color up and start to see the hierarchies form and males, you know, dominant males start to show their, their colors and then we've got the females that start to do their thing and it's, it really is a lot of fun for us. And so a lot of times when we bring fish home and we show them to you, you're like, wow, look at that. It's another silver or brown fish. And I, I know it takes some patience. These fish will not stay silver and brown forever because they're cichlids. They will color up in time. And again, it's something we enjoy. But the big advantage for us is that we have gotten extremely healthy fish. And sometimes you can get some very rare fish through your local clubs that are not found in fish stores, not found in the pet stores. And that's a huge advantage. The other cool thing about the swaps is you can trade fish with club members. The Maltese that we have, we've given those to some of our club members. And in fact, if you were to go to Creative Pet Keeping, you could see some of our Maltese on her on Kasha's channel as well. It's a great channel. She raises bettas and does all kinds of cool things with fish. And they are there. They're little movie stars now. Uh, so it's awesome to be able to trade fish with club members. The pink flamingo guppies that we have, the Episto Agazizis, uh, those came from club members on trades. So very excited about what we're seeing in the clubs and I highly recommend if you have one in the area check it out. So after going through this series we just thought it'd be a great idea to kind of give you some direction as to the options you have when you buy fish. You may find that your local large pet stores, your chain stores are an awesome place. If that's the case that's great. The main thing is is that you're getting fish that you like, they're healthy and you're able to enjoy the hobby. So thank you for watching. We really appreciate all the support. If you like this video, share it, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.